my name is Sam Bescoby. I'm one of the veterinary surgeons here at BMW. Uh, this is the first of our mini series of talks looking into the field of equine dentistry. Our first video is going to be on the anatomy of the teeth and basically what is inside your horse's mouth. The horse evolved from a knee high creature about 55 million years ago to the 500 kilo animal that it is today. It's obviously had to go and go quite a, quite a few steps to get to the stage it is. And importantly, the, the dentition of the horse has become one of the main features of how it can turn grass into so much muscle. So what we're going to do in this little video is start at the front of the mouth and work our way back, just going through the basic anatomy so that you can see what we see when we have a look at your horse's mouth and importantly understand why we do the certain things that we do. Okay, if we start at the front of the mouth, the first thing that you can see, and importantly what we can see as well, is the incisors. There are six upper and six lower. The deciduous or baby <coughs> incisors begin erupting within a few days of birth, and they finish by around six to nine months of age. You can tell them apart from adult teeth, as they are whiter than their adult counterparts. Adult teeth are more yellow in colour, but unlike us who have yellow teeth due to poor health care, uh, the yellow teeth is cement, and this is entirely normal in the horse. The adult incisors erupt from around two and a half years of age to four and a half years of age. Unlike our teeth, they are continually erupting. So they intrinsically grow up to around eight, 17, 18 years of age and continually erupt through that period. They wear down at about two and a half millimeters a year and until around about 17 years, because they're constantly growing from within, they will stay at the same length. Over 17 years old and into their later years, they still continue to erupt at the same rate, but no longer are growing from within. So from that age, they start to get a little bit shorter. Their, their use is to cut or grass food. They don't have a major role in the actual chewing of food, so the importance of them is pretty minimal once the food gets into the horse's mouth. I've put an x-ray of the incisors up on the screen so you can see the length they are. Okay, if you look at the red arrow, this points to the gum line. As you can see, there's a vast amount of tooth that is not visible to us. It's important to know this because if we see things that are starting on the surface, we need to act on them quickly before within that tooth starts to become diseased as well. Twelve temporary cheek teeth, known as the deciduous premolars, erupt at birth or within a few days. The adult mouth normally contains 24 cheek teeth arranged as four rows of six teeth. The adult teeth should be in wear by around about five years of age. The three molars and three premolars that comprise those six cheek teeth to make that one grinding unit are arranged in a, in a nice straight line with the front tooth and the back tooth growing against each other to compress all the teeth together. This makes it act as one unit similar to how an elephant works. The upper teeth are wider than the lower teeth and have a separate cavity called the infundibulum that isn't present in the lower teeth. It's important for the chewing cycle to have this mixture of different materials and different width to efficiently break down the forage. It's also a common site for tooth decay, so it's important that we must che check this area of the tooth whenever, whenever we look in the horse's mouth. In the picture you can see the surface of the teeth. As you can see there's a variety of colours on the surface, and like I've just said before, those are, these are all different materials that make up a horse's tooth. They're all worn down at different rates which creates a rough, uneven surface, perfect for grazing. It's important to look at the black areas. These are layers of a substance called dentine. This lies directly over the pulp cavities of the tooth, and these protect the sensitive vital structures that provide life to the tooth. The horse, unlike us, continually lays down new layers of dentine to stop the pulp from becoming exposed. What you cannot see is the nine centimeters of tooth in reserve that will gradually be worn down over the life of the horse. The canines, these are up between four and six years old and they're present in most male horses but are usually absent in or rudimentary in the female horse. These teeth are different to the other teeth in the horse, they are not continually erupting. They're more like our teeth and certain should be treated like that when routine dentistry is performed. A basic rule is rasping of them shouldn't really take place and certainly large scale lowering of them is definitely the wrong thing to do because we could open up this tooth and if we open up the pulp of this tooth we will kill the tooth. As you can see from the picture of, a, of an extracted canine, you can see it's a very, very curved shape to it, which means that if we did ever have damage to it, it's very difficult to get it out. Knowing this anatomy is essential to doing good dentistry. Lastly, and not least in some cases, are the wolf teeth. These are vestigial teeth that may or may not be present. If they are present, they're usually in front of the upper cheek teeth and should lie immediately in front of them. 
Their roots can be anything from a couple of millimetres, making them unstable within the mouth, to being over three centimetres. They may be shed at two and a half years when the horse sheds its first cheek teeth or they may be within the mouth for many years to come. It's important that when we check there that we find out if they're causing a problem and in rare cases we find they cause a problem we will take them out. For more information about our digital dental clinic please go to our website on the link below, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter or subscribe to our YouTube channel.